Welcome New Journey and Indianola First Youth. We are so glad you are here with us tonight. I have a couple announcements for you. And uh, the very first announcement I have is if you have not joined us on Instagram or Facebook, you need to do that because we have been playing games on those platforms. We have been um, giving out encouraging words on those uh, two platforms. So, uh, and you, you have a chance to actually win prizes throughout the week if you're watching and playing along. I know this week uh, for Indianola First, Mallory Zimmerman won a $10 gift card to Finero. So good job, Mallory. Uh, so go ahead and join us on those two platforms, Instagram or uh, Facebook for Indianola. It's Indianola First Youth. So go ahead and do that for New Journey. It's New Journey Youth. Get on those things and follow us. Um, the next announcement I have is for Indianola First Youth. If you are around this Friday at 5.30, we, this, we have something for you to do. We need you to go to a restaurant and get your food and come back to the church parking lot. We're gonna sit in our cars and we will eat uh, dinner together um, in our parking lot, or in our uh, cars. Then we will go out and we are gonna canvas the town with prayers. I believe New Journey Youth, you will be doing the same thing, but check your website for further information on that. Um, we love you guys, we miss you, and we can't wait till we can actually join again in person. Life is gone. The old life is gone. 
been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a ninety-nine. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, still you yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall. Hey there, Indianola First Youth and New Journey Youth. Man, I can't tell you guys how much that I miss meeting uh, with you guys in person, but you know what, this is a, a fun way of doing it. As you can tell, I'm not preaching inside today. It's so beautiful out, I thought, you know what? I'll just go to the roof of the church and preach today. There's really no other reason besides it's nice I needed to get out. But uh, maybe next week, you know, you guys could chime in. Where would you like me to preach? Uh, the next time because, it, you know, hey, why not? It'll be, it's fun to go different places and we might as well use this to do something fun. So um, I, I'm just glad that we could still meet and I just want you guys to know that I miss you so much and I can't wait till we can actually meet together in person. Tonight, though, I would like to uh, tell you about a game that my daughter started to play with me over this quarantine time. Now, I'm not sure if they saw this game somewhere and they started playing it or if uh, they just did it out of boredom, but they started to play this game. And I, I want you guys to know that you should start playing this game at home sometime too, if you want to. I will tell you this, that, that I cheat a little bit at this game and you'll know why as I explain the game, but I cheat just a little bit during this game. So if you have to bend the rules a little bit with this game, go ahead. But what they do is they will go ahead and grab a remote and then they'll run around the house and either with each other or myself and they will point their remote at me or one of them and they'll yell, pause. And when they yell pause, the point of the game is that you stop moving. You are paused at whatever you are doing, whether you're coming down the stairs, you pause. Whether you are brushing your teeth, 
you'll pause. Whether you are drinking a glass of milk or pouring a glass of milk into a cup, you pause. That's where I kind of bend the rules a little bit because if I'm pouring water or milk or lemonade or something like that and it's gonna overflow, I might say, okay, I'm unpaused. But the point of the game is for you to stay paused as long as you can or until they unpause you. Now, I have seen this game played um, <clears throat> with some people online. I've seen them play it where they'll go out with their friends and they'll do a little more extreme stuff. Like they'll be in a crowded mall or a crowded uh, place and they'll be running down the, or they'll be coming down the escalator and one of their friends will turn around and say, pause right at the bottom of the escalator. So all the people behind them have to get around them people and they're, they're super mad. Everybody that's going around them are super mad that that guy is standing in the way or else they'll be riding a train somewhere and one of the guys will hop off the train and turn around and yell, pause, right before the other guy gets off of the train, the doors close and off that guy goes to the next stop, wherever he might go. But that is the game. Um, I, I recommend you go ahead and play it around your house with your, with your family. It's kind of fun. If you need to bend the rules, I understand. But I wanted to use that illustration to say, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but I feel right now uh, like somebody grabbed a giant remote and just yelled, pause on my life, on the world, on everything that's going around us. Somebody just said, pause. And it feels like like just yesterday, I was moving around, I was doing stuff, I was taking my kids to school, I was taking them to basketball practice, I was doing everything that I was doing this and that and whatever else I could. And now all of a sudden, pause, I'm not doing any of that stuff. I come to work, I go home, I stay at home all night, and, and it's just like, pause, and I'm not saying that God did that, I'm not saying God created this virus or anything that I'm saying, but I am saying that God can use a time like this where we are all paused, where we can't go anywhere, where we can't do anything, um, and God can use this uh, time for us to self-examine our lives and our hearts and reprioritize some of the stuff that's going on in our lives. And tonight, through this message, I hope uh, that you do just that. I pray that you do some self-examining of your heart and your priorities. With this slowdown, I think we can look and see what are we filling our lives and our time with. I want you to ask yourself those questions as we go through this message. What am I filling my life and my time with? Are we taking advantage of this pause that we are on? Or are we still filling our lives up with things that don't really matter? I would like to show you just a short video of what I'm kind of talking about today to help illustrate where, where we're going with this. So let's go ahead and watch this video and I'll be right back. A lot of the time, we tend to put other stuff in our lives. When we do that, we don't leave time for the stuff that really matters. You know, when we put playing video games or watching the next Netflix or playing sports or, or watching sports in front of Jesus, then by the end of the day, we don't have anything left for Jesus. So where does Jesus end up? He ends up 
on the side of our, our, our life, of our, the jar of life. He ends up on the side of that. He doesn't end up in the middle of it. He doesn't end up first. He ends up on the side because we filled our lives just like that illustration showed. We fill our life with the other stuff. And, and then by time Jesus comes, it's like, oh, I have to, you're too tired. You don't have enough time. So why? He gets shoved to the back of that time. We, and we, as people right now, need to take a hold of this pause and use it to reprioritize our lives. We shouldn't think of this time as a time to just relax and do nothing. Oh, I can finally sleep more. Oh, I can play more video games. I can do all this stuff. Um, and so I'm just going to relax and not do anything. We shouldn't think of it like that. But we should think of this time as a time to pause our busy lives that we have gotten so full of things. I'm, I'm talking to myself as well as you guys tonight, but we should take this time and, and really think what is important? What needs to go back to the top of my priority list? What do I need to fill myself up with since I have this extra time? And we need to use it, use this time to put Jesus back at the top of, that, uh, of, of the list of important things and important people in our lives. Now, there are many people in the Bible whose lives got put on pause to help them get back on track. One guy that I, I think of that comes to mind is Jonah. You know, here's Jonah doing what he wants to do, doing everything he can. And God says, hey, I need you to go to Nineveh to talk to the people about me. And what does Jonah do? Jonah's like, no way. And he runs the other way. And he goes the exact opposite way that God wanted him to do. Well, because of that, he ended up having a big pause in his life. And he had to have that pause in the belly of a fish. I'm sure grateful that we don't have to have this pause in the belly of a fish. But Jonah did. Another person that comes to my mind is Saul before he came Paul. On the way to, uh, on the road to D Damascus in Acts chapter 9, we see Paul is going there and he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's going to kill Christians. But on the way, God flashes a light and he's knocked down and he's taken out and his life is put on pause for a moment. And you see, he has this pause where actually he didn't see, he couldn't eat, he couldn't drink. His pause was a big pause, but out of that pause, his life was changed and he was different than before. But the people I want to talk about and I really want to focus on tonight is this, and, and this story can be found in Luke 10, verse 38 through 42. And I actually want to read this story with you guys. So what I need you to do right now, really quick, is to go get your Bibles, your phones, whatever you read the Bible out of. Go grab that and open up to Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. I'm going to go ahead and open up right now. We're going to read that together. <clears throat> All right. And it says, Luke 10, verse 38, I hope you had enough time to go get what you needed to do. But here we go. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. So we can see, um, we can see that this story is about Mary and Martha, and you know they both had the same opportunities. They both could have done uh, one or the other things, but we see that one of the sisters stopped moving and sat and took time to pause her life to hang out with Jesus, to just be with Jesus, where the other one was so busy running around, distracted by so much, and nobody said, Jesus didn't come to their house and say, hey, Martha, make sure that um, the table's set good. Martha, make sure that your house is clean. Hey, Martha, make sure that you have everything in order so when I come there, I can sit and hang out with you. No, nobody said that. But Martha, that's what Martha chose to do. Martha chose to not pause her life, to stay busy, to fill it up with other stuff instead of just taking the time like, like Mary did and sit at Jesus' feet. We could see that in the first part of verse 40, it says that Martha was distracted by all the preparation that needed to be done. She was in the very presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords 
and yet everything else was going on. And, and the, business, the busyness of the world had her neglecting the one thing that she should have been paying the most attention to. She was so busy getting the house picked up, getting the table ready, getting all that stuff, that she missed the one thing that was right in front of her, the best thing that was right in front of her. Her distractions were so present that she ran up to Jesus and the rest of verse 40 says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus responded with the best response ever, with the greatest response ever. And I, that's why I love Jesus. He had such a good response to, to people. And in verse 41 and 42, he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So the first point and the first question I want you to ask yourself is this. And I'm going to phrase these differently, but it's okay. Uh, and I want you to ask yourself, pause. Are you a Martha? What I mean by that is, is here we've, we, are, we are in a forced pause in our lives right now. The world is in a forced pause right now. We don't have any sports to watch or to play, which just pause there for a moment because I'm a little sad that baseball is not going on right now. So coronavirus, you need to leave in the name of Jesus so uh, we can watch a little baseball. Uh, <laughs> and there's other things that, that are important too. But we don't have any sports to watch or play. We can't really go anywhere or do anything. There isn't any school. No shopping sprees or, or places to go shopping like that or get together with uh, friends. Uh, we can't do any of that stuff. So we are forced into this pause in our lives. Now with that pause, are you still acting like a Martha? Are you still doing uh, busy work that, that you are missing out on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who is in the exact same room with you? Are you distracted by everything that you think that you think needs to get done that you're missing out on spending time with Jesus? Again, I'm not saying that God caused this virus to happen, but what I am saying is that maybe God is using this time to call his children back to him. Maybe God is using this time to call you back to him, back to prayer, back to the word. You know, maybe God is using this and we just need to take a hold of this. I've heard it said that if Satan can't shake your faith, that it'll make you busy. I feel like that is what is happening in our country. That's what happened in my life. That's probably what's happening in your life, that, God, that, that Satan has just made us busy. We've gotten so busy doing things that we, think, that, that we think are important, that we have neglected the one thing that we should never, ever neglect, and that's spending time with Jesus. That's resting uh, at the feet of of Jesus. And now while we're in this pause as a world, it's important that we throw off every distraction that has gotten in the way of our time with Jesus. Hebrews 12:1 says it like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. We need to throw off everything that hinders us. Every sin that tries to entangle us, we need to get rid of it. Now is a great time to stop acting like a Martha and change our focus. Get our focus off the things of this world and put it back onto Jesus. Why is now a great time? Because everything is paused right now. There is no excuse why we can't spend time with God and stop acting like a Martha. It's our choice to pause and either be a, be a Martha or pause and choose what is better. Which brings me to my next point. Pause and choose what is better. It's time we start being more like Mary. Jesus said to Martha, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. We need to start choosing what is better from now on. There is no better choice you can make than to spend time with Jesus. No other choice. You know, it was a few weeks ago that um, that, that, that kind of came into my heart and into my spirit when this thing started. And, and it was just like God hit me across the head and said, whoa, you are in this time of slowing down. Why do you feel so busy still? You, you need to take and choose 
what is better. I believe God is telling us that right now as a youth group, as individual peoples, to, to pause and really uh, um, make time for Jesus. Choose what is better. Jesus said, since she has chosen what is better, it will not be taken away. When we make that choice to pause, even after this coronavirus, this goes on forever. It's not just right now, but we need to choose that even after. We need to choose and sit at Jesus' feet and spend time with him. Uh, and, he, and, and he throws blessings on us and he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. When we choose this stuff, we get so many more benefits that come back to us. Ephesians 5, 15 and 17 says, be, care, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. It's time that we are careful with how we live. We need to stop missing the opportunities that God has, has already laid out for us. When, he, when we see an opportunity to share the love of Christ, we need to take hold of it. We need to grab a hold of that. When we see the opportunity to spend time with Jesus, let's not pass it up. Let's take that as a time to pause our lives and, and, and everything around us and take a hold of that. The days are evil and we need to start making wise decisions and spending as much time as we can with Jesus. Just like Mary. Let me tell you guys that that, that mess is still going to be there. That, that stuff is still going to be there that you think that you have to do right now. It's still going to be there. But make sure that you have your priorities right, that you are spending time with Jesus. And then we'll get to that other stuff later. Jesus has to be number one. It has to be, he has to be the, the most important. Let's start acting like Mary and choose what is better. The world is in desperate need of some people who are sold out to Jesus and who are not scared to spread the word of God. The only way we can get to that point is to surround ourselves with the presence of God. And the only way to be surrounded with the presence of God is to spend time with Him. Is to take time out of your day and spend time with Him. That's your choice. That is your choice. During this pause, are you choosing to live more like Mary? Or are you choosing to live more like Martha? Martha had the same opportunities that Mary had. She just chose wrong. Jesus said that Mary chose what was better. And if Jesus was to look at your life right now during this pause, what would he say? What would he compare you to? Mary or Martha? Who are you during this time where we are in a forced pause? And that question should cause us to look at how we are spending our time these days. And this brings me to my final point tonight, which is pause. How are you spending your time? If you were to write down your day from the time you got up to the time you went to bed, what would that sheet of paper fill up to be? What would that time fill in right there? Would it be full of other stuff, like in that jar illustration? Would it be full of like sleeping in, watching Netflix, uh, playing video games, getting on Instagram, looking on Facebook, learning new TikTok dances and taking a half hour to learn those TikTok dances, which I may or may not be trying to do uh, with my daughters. But you know, how would that fill up? What would your day fill up with? When you fill your days with that stuff, by the end of the day, you didn't have time for the important things, like spending time with Jesus, praying, reading your Bible, having good, healthy conversations with your friends, spending time with your family. We have to make sure that we are putting that stuff in the jar first before the other stuff that's not important. Let's make sure that we grab that, you know, just like in that illustration, let's grab the rock that says Jesus, put that in. Then grab the rock that says family, put that in. Then grab the rock that, that, that says, um, you know, having friends that are good influences on me, put that in. And then we have to put the other stuff in and then the other stuff after that. You know, it's very important that we get our priorities right because when we put the important stuff in first, we will have time to do the other things too. You know, it's very important that while we're on this pause, that we are checking our hearts and checking our priorities and asking ourselves these three questions. I want you to ask yourselves, write these questions down and ask yourself these questions daily. Ask that question of pause, am I a Martha? Ask that question of pause, am I choosing what is better? 
as a question, pause. How am I spending my time? And I, I want to encourage you guys. I want to say, you know what? Maybe take a day and grab a notebook and write down every part of your day from the time you get up until you go to bed and see how your jar of life is being filled up. Is it being filled up with the other stuff and Jesus is getting put on the back burner? Or is it being filled with the stuff that Jesus wants us to fill it with and we will have time to do that other stuff? So my challenge for you this week is just that. Since we have this time because of the pause, because the whole world is on pause right now, if you are being or have been distracted or you haven't been choosing what is better and, and your time hasn't been, spe uh, been spent well, I want you to readjust your life. Readjust uh, how you do your days. Let's take hold of this pause and let, let's turn this thing that was a negative into a positive and let's, let, let, let's use it to glorify God. Let's use our days and our lives to glorify God. Maybe use this time to call your friends and to pray with your friends and let them know that they don't have to have fear, that they can make it through this, that we can make it through this, you know, and that God is there for us and he loves us and he, is, he wants to take care of us. But let's fill our days being a Mary and sitting at Jesus' feet and, and just worshiping him and reading our Bible and praying and spending time with our family. We have, we have time on our side this time. So let's take a hold of it. What I wanna challenge you uh, with is to put Jesus at the top of your priority list and do the important tasks first, then fill your day with everything else. Start with Jesus. Start with sitting at his feet. Let's put the important stuff back in first of the jar of our lives and then we can add the other stuff let me pray with you and then i want i want you guys to have a good day and, and and a good week but here i'm gonna pray for you lord i just come god and i just thank you for every student every adult that might be watching god and i just pray lord that we would start filling our our jar of life with the important stuff god that we would put you back at the forefront of our life that we would put family back at the forefront of our life god that we'll put prayer and read our bible back at the forefront of our life as a family, as a group, God, that we would do this and we would see you start moving in miraculous ways, God. I thank you for every student, God, that's part of Indianola First Assembly and New Journey Youth. And I pray, I, I thank you for everybody else who is joining us as well, God. And I ask that you would just bless their days, God, and that we would remember to just pause and put you back uh, first, God. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you guys and, and just... Have a great week with Jesus at the front.